Hey everyone, welcome to lesson 3.2 in uh, my book. So we are gonna now talk about more advanced linear equations and modeling. And so what I wanted to do to start, I've already written this out for you so you can pause the video and write this down. Um, I just wanna kinda talk about a general procedure for approaching linear equations. Um, and I think on the most part, you, you'd probably know to do this um, without even really thinking about it, but I wanted to formalize this. So the first thing is you'd wanna clear your fractions or decimals. We have not seen how to do this yet. That's what we're actually gonna talk about in this video. Um, then you would distribute, collect any like terms on each of the equation, um, use the addition principle to get the x's on one side and numbers on the other. And then let me just see how this scroll down a little. Sorry about that. Um, so, and then five, you'd wanna use, uh, finish solving for x by using the multiplication principle. So I would recommend maybe you just wanna pause the video and, and write these things down. So um, you can write this down, one through four, and then I'll just scroll down here. Here's the other part, the last part, number five. So um, when you're ready, hit play and we'll get started. So where we're gonna start is, first we're just gonna talk about examples that clear fractions first. And here's the example that I'm gonna use. One over six x plus one fourth equals three over four. So I'd recommend maybe watching how to do this example and then writing it down for yourself. Okay, so the, the whole thing with this is, you might be thinking, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to work with all these fractions and it's gonna take me forever, but there's actually a much better approach for this where we clear out the fractions. So this is an approach you can use only when you've got an equation. So as long as you've got the equal sign in here, you are free to use this technique. And the technique is that um, you wanna look at all of the fractions in the equation and find the LCD of all fractions. So in this case, that LCD would be what? The LCD in this case would be 12. So after you find that, then you want to multiply every single part of that equation by the LCD. So I'll show you what that looks like. I've left myself some intentional extra space. So I want to go through and multiply each part of this by 12, as you can see here. And actually, let me write this out maybe just slightly bigger so that you don't have so much trouble reading it. So, okay, I've multiplied everything by 12. Now what we want to do is we want to go through and we, we want to see what happens. So basically, by choosing the LCD, what will happen if you chose it properly? Each denominator now will divide into this number, which was kind of the goal here. So let me use maybe this, uh, let's see, I'll use this green color here. So for instance, 6 divides into 12 how many times? It divides in twice, right? So check out what I'm left with. I'm left with this two times this one X. So let's just analyze this before I go any farther. What you do from this point is you multiply this whole thing out. So I'm left with two times one X. So that is going to become this little piece here is now just gonna be two X. Okay, so now let's move on to the next part. So now I've got this one fourth times 12. So you can just think of this as how many times does four go into 12? four goes into 12 three times. So this is what you need to multiply what's left over by. So in this case now I've just got this one and then times this three. So this becomes plus three. Okay, and so now we can work on the last part of this. So we'll repeat this one more time. How many times does four go into 12? Four goes into 12 three times. So I'm going to multiply whatever is left over by three. And in this case, if you look at what's left over, I've crossed out the four, I've crossed out the 12. Now I'm just left with this three here. So this three times this three, three times three is nine. And so that's what I'm gonna write at the end here. And so look at how much nicer this is to work with than where we were just at, right? So before I would have had just this nightmare of all these numbers and now I cleared everything out and now I'm left with this. So this is something you should be able to do without a calculator. And so let's go ahead now and just solve this as usual. So now I'm left with two X equals six, divide each side by two, and I get X equals three. Okay, so this is the basic idea behind this. Um, I'm going to have you practice this a lot more in another video, but I wanna just do this one more time with you so that um, you, you get a little bit more practice and just to make sure you've got kind of the basic idea. So let's go down here and I'll write down a new example. 
Okay, so here's my new example, and this looks, I know, a, a lot different from the last uh, example, but this is going to kind of set us up so that we can do more examples later on. So we'll do, we'll do a lot more of these. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging in this. Okay, so looking at this, so I want to first just focus on the fractions. So let's just take this piece by piece. So I've got one-third, I've got one-fifth, I've got two-thirds. What is the LCD of all of those fractions? Well, the LCD here would just be 15. So now what I want to do is just show you how do you actually look at this. So when you have a fraction times something, so the, the thing is when you are multiplying um, every part of the problem by that LCD, it's now a matter of knowing what counts as a part. So if you have a fraction being multiplied by something, this whole thing here, this is a part, this is one part, this is one part, and this is one part. So I only have three parts of a problem. And so when I multiply this out, I am only, I'm only going to multiply really the fractions by this. You don't have to distribute the 15 in. So let me show you what that's going to look like. I have 15 times this and 15 times this, and then this times 15. So this is very important that you kind of adjust your eyes to this because otherwise you're going to kind of double multiply the 15 in an unnecessary way and then you won't get the right answer and you'll actually make the problem a lot harder. So this is kind of a, a, a trick here and like I said we'll, we'll practice this more in, in another video but I want to kind of keep going forward with this with you. So now all you have to do is multiply these fractions by 15 and you don't have to worry about what's going to happen here for now okay. So 3 divides into 15 how many times? 3 divides into 15 five times. So what I'm left with here is just five times this one. So I'm just worrying about the stuff outside of the fraction for now. So five times one is five. That's a terrible looking five, isn't it? Uh, okay, five times two x plus one. And so then I will distribute that later on. So let's keep going down the line here. How many times does five go into 15? Well, it goes in three times. So I'm going to cancel these out and write a three times this. And so now look, I've got three times one. Three times one is just three. So this is going to be minus three times all this other stuff. And we'll worry about that later. And then finally, how many times does three go into 15 here? So now doing this one. So three goes into 15 five times. So now I need to do what's left over, 2 times 5. So that's 10. So there's what I have to work out. So now I would much rather deal with this problem than what we had before um, because now I can just distribute and do this like I, I normally would. So if I distribute, let's see what I get. I get 10x plus 5 minus 9x minus 12 equals 10. And now you can just solve this as usual. So I can collect my like terms. So 10 minus 9x is x and 5 minus 12 is negative 7 and then all that equals 10. And then I can add the 7 to each side and I get that x equals 17. So that will be my solution here. So this is the basic idea behind this and I have in a couple pages just a lot more examples to give you lots of practice. So I, I am going to stop the video here and show you one other technique to talk about and then we'll, we'll practice this way more, I promise.